I sent the video to Sister Gilda when we were moving back from Oklahoma to Florida. We was in our, um, I guess it was a rider truck that we had. We was in our truck coming back, and Noah was about nine then. All the youth are staying in here, guys. Teenagers are staying. Teens are staying in here. But uh, Noah was about nine years old, and he was filming me as I was singing my rendition of that song of Brian Free and uh, hitting all the high notes, mind you. And it was beautiful. Yeah, I, I better not do that. First Samuel chapter 17. She was tempting me, though. I get the feeling it in my feet, that Brian Free. want to talk tonight, want to tie a familiar Bible story into our need for the Holy Ghost. But uh, we would look at this story and we, would don't, we wouldn't think that we see the Holy Ghost in this story, but the way the Lord revealed to me and laid it upon my heart, um, well, I hope I can share the way he's laid it upon my heart. I want to be able to deliver uh, what he's placed upon my heart for, for this service tonight. 1 Samuel 17, verse 40. If you'll stand with me for the reading of the word. Those of you who's been with us for a while has probably heard this message before. I believe I preached it uh, not long after I came here. I believe back in 2014, preached this message. And the Lord just brought it back to my remembrance here a couple uh, Sunday nights ago when I preached on the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And at the end of that service, I uh, felt like the Lord... Uh, laid on my heart to share with you that we are the arrows of the Lord's deliverance. And, and as I was concluding that service, this message came to my heart, and I've just been praying, couldn't get it off my heart and my mind, and I felt it like it was for this service this evening. First Samuel 17, verse 40. We know that many of us know the story of David. Those who did not, David was on the battlefield, just a small child with a slingshot, just a boy with a slingshot and five smooth stones going up against this giant, this warrior. It's a familiar story in Sunday school and children's church, but here we find him. Here, and it says he's getting ready for this battle in verse 40. It says, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And drop down to verse 49. And David put his hand in his bag, and took thence a stone, and slang it. And smote the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. Probably one of my favorite stories, probably every preacher's one of their favorite stories to preach from. Is the story of David and Goliath. What a powerful scene unfolds un before us here. But I, I just want to preach from these two verses this evening uh, with uh, several others tied into it and just pray that God would speak to our hearts tonight. Will you just stretch your hands towards heaven tonight once again? Let's just ask God to, to speak to our hearts this evening. Father, we just come surrendered to you, committed to your will and your way, thanking you for the opportunity that we have to be in your house, thankful for the opportunity that we have to feel your presence. We're thankful that you are our God and our rock and our salvation. And we just come before you tonight recognizing our need for you. We need the anointing because the anointing not only makes the difference, but the anointing is the difference. And I pray that the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost would move in this service tonight. There's one here tonight that's not filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray that you would feel them. I pray, Lord, that you would just minister to our hearts this evening. We would not get into Wednesday night, rush in and rush out and, and just uh, miss what you want to do. But I pray, God, open our hearts to receive what you have for us this evening uh, and minister to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Wednesday night is kind of, by tradition, has been known as prayer meeting or Bible study. Here over the last several weeks, we've just been preaching on Wednesday night, and that's what I want to do to, this evening with this, uh, this message titled, Stone and the Sling of the Shepherd. David is here, and as he's here, we see in these verses that I read to you, 
that we find three things in in this text. We find a shepherd, which David was a shepherd boy who had come from taking care of the sheep and came out to the battlefield to deliver food. And when he came to deliver these items to his brother, he saw this giant there, uh, and and he was breathing out threatenings to, to the children and the soldiers of Israel. And David began to wonder who was going to stop this this giant, this uncircumcised Philistine is what he called him. Who's going to put an end to him? Well, uh, came, came to it all unfolded uh, to see that the only one that was willing to go and fight the giant was not a warrior at all. It was a, uh, it was a shepherd boy who had, did not have a sword. Matter of fact, uh, the king gave him his armor and said, if you're going to go fight that giant, you're going to need some armor. Take mine because I'm not going to use it. Uh, he refused to fight him. Uh, but David said, I've not proven that armor. He shook off the armor. And he said, I'm just going to go with what I know. I'm just going to go with what I have. And what he had was a, a, a sack or a strip that he had, or a, a bag, a shepherd's bag that hung by his side with five smooth stones in it. And in his hand, a sling was in his hand. We see here that we've got a shepherd boy uh, who has a sling, uh, and he has a bag that has five stones in it. But as we read in verse 49, uh, he didn't need five stones. He only needed one stone. Uh, So what we see here in these verses in our text tonight uh, is we have a shepherd, uh, a sling, and a stone. And that shepherd takes that stone and he puts it in the sling. And then it says that he slung slung it and he smote the Philistine in his forehead. That The stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. David took that stone and put it in that sling and slang it and it hit the only place that it could hit. It hit the only place that that Philistine was not armored. It was directed into that right place. Was David that good of a shot? I don't know. Uh, But what I do know uh, is he said, you come to me with a spear and a sword but I come to you in the name uh, of the Lord of hosts. Uh, So he came there, 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 that valley that day uh, with just a sling and just a bag uh, and just a stone. Uh, But when he came there, he came there on business uh, for the king of kings. Uh, So what does this story mean to us tonight? Uh, We look at this story Uh, and we begin to think about the story, there's some things uh, that we may be or something that we want to be in this story to say, uh, I want to be that shepherd that is used to take down giants. Uh, I want to be a giant slayer. That's what David was known as. Uh, After this, he was known as a giant slayer. You can study the life of David, uh, and you find that David not only uh, slew this giant, but he slew other giants, uh, and he trained his men who also did the same thing uh, later in years. Uh, So maybe tonight we say, man, I want to be that shepherd. I want to be that giant slayer. Uh, I want to be that one that comes there uh, into that valley and begins to accomplish something uh, for the kingdom of God. That's should be the desire of each one of us tonight uh, is to accomplish something uh, for the kingdom of God. I want to be the arrow of the Lord's deliverance uh, because I know uh, if I am the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, uh, I am going to hit the mark just as David. uh, The only place that could hit, uh, that he could hit, uh, that would kill that Philistine, that's where he hits. So we look at this story and then we jump over into the New Testament and we find that We're not the shepherd, but we know the shepherd. We know the great shepherd. His name is Jesus. And and we find out something else. We're not the sling. We're not the sling. But we are the stone. John 1, 42, and it says, And he brought him to Jesus. When Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. So here in John 1, 42, we have the shepherd again. And that shepherd's name is Jesus. He's our shepherd. Uh, Psalms 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. And David knew something about 
being a shepherd uh, because he was one. Uh, and he wrote that about the Lord. Uh, so we see here that Jesus, uh, the great shepherd, is in this verse. Uh, but also in this verse, there's a, a disciple that he picks out. There's one of the twelve uh, that he pulls out and begins to, to look at him. And he tells him uh, what his name is. Uh, I, I'm glad to know tonight that the Lord knows my name. That he knows my name, that he knows who I am, and he knows what I am. He said, which by interpretation is a stone. Can I tell you tonight that Peter was not the only one that is a stone, but he said that we are to be those lively stones. So he has here in his disciples, as begins to round them up, he puts a stone in the shepherd's bag. So here in John 1, 42, just as we had in 1 Samuel 17, we We've got a shepherd and we've got a stone. So we look at this in Luke 24 and 49 as these uh, Peter and, uh, and all of the other disciples walked with Jesus uh, and saw great miracles for three and a half years. They went everywhere he went, uh, saw as he raised the dead, opened blinded eyes, uh, worked miracles and wonders. Uh, and it came the day as we talked about on Sunday uh, on Luke 24 and 49 it says uh, that he gathers them there on a hillside uh, and there's a great multitude that's there that day uh, and as he gathers them there he said and behold uh, I send the promise of my father upon you uh, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem uh, until ye be endued with power uh, from on high. Uh, so we have a shepherd uh, and we have a stone uh, but we don't have a way for that stone uh, to hit the market uh, and Jesus said it's expedient for you that I go away uh, for if I go not away, the promise of my Father cannot come. He told them where to go and where to expect it. We talked about all of that Sunday, about doubting Thomas, how he saw him and how he believed. But he went on to say in Acts 1 and 8, what was going to happen when they got to Jerusalem. He said, when you get there, you will be endued with power from on high, is what he said in verse 49 of Luke 24. Then in Acts 1 and 8 he said, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. What, what's he talking about? What does this have to do with David and Goliath? Uh, well, in our, in our verse there in John 1, 42, we had a shepherd uh, and we have a stone. Uh, but as we're leading up here, we're seeing what is happening, what is unfolding uh, before our eyes here in Scripture uh, is what he's telling us uh, in Luke 2 and 4. He said, and they will be filled. And they were all filled uh, with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues uh, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, when David was standing there in that valley, we had a shepherd, we had a sling, and we had a stone. But as we begin to look in the New Testament, God is the shepherd. Jesus is that great shepherd. And he began to gather those stones. David went by that brook, and he picked up five smooth stones. Jesus went by the Sea of Galilee, and he began to gather up some stones. One of them that he gave the name, and interpret his name as being a stone. His name was was Peter. Uh, he gathered them up into his hand uh, and he put them there uh, in his shepherd's bag if you will. Uh, but he said that there is going to be a way uh, for you to make a difference. Uh, you shall receive power. Uh, you shall uh, be a witness unto me in Jerusalem. What was he saying? You will hit the mark. Uh, you will make the difference. Uh, you will change the world. Uh, you will do great and mighty things. Uh, but there had to be something else. Uh, it couldn't just be a shepherd and a stone. He said that you, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So as we look at this, he said they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So that makes, in this story, in this message, in this sermon tonight, the Holy Ghost, the sling. So now we have everything that we need to defeat the giants in our lives. Now we have everything that we need to be victorious just as David was there in 1 Samuel chapter 17. We have a shepherd, we have a sling, and we have a stone. That shepherd is Jesus. That stone is you and I. And that sling is the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost
Ghost, uh, in that, it being that sling has that torque uh, and that power. Uh, and you can picture the scene there that day uh, as David, it says he ran towards that giant. Uh, and as he's running towards that giant, uh, and he's got that sling in his hand, uh, and he's spinning that sling uh, in his hand, and that stone is there in that sling. Uh, when it was released, uh, it wasn't just a pebble. The, the giant just didn't uh, knock it off and say, well, uh, that, that didn't even bother me. It wasn't like a mosquito hitting him between the eyes. Uh, but it hit him with such force uh, that he fell flat on his face that David took his sword uh, and removed his head from his body. Uh, it came with mighty force. Uh, can I tell you tonight, uh, when we come out uh, of the house of God, when we come out uh, of the sling of the shepherd, that we too will go out into the world uh, with great force, great power, uh, great authority. Uh, and I guarantee you, uh, we will hit the mark. Uh, we will be uh, victorious. Uh, we will be more than conquerors. Uh, but we must desire to be a stone uh, in the sling uh, of the shepherd. We must be sure that we are sent out. Now remember there in John 1, 42, uh, that he told Peter, Thou art a stone. It says in verse 14 of Acts 2, but Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, let it be known unto you, and hearken to my words. Verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do. Uh, now understand something here. What happened, uh, what unfolded here in this story uh, is here comes Peter uh, and he's coming out of the upper room uh, and he immediately stands up uh, and begins to preach that gospel. Uh, can we see this tonight? That he didn't just come walking uh, down the stairs of the, of the upper room. Uh, that, that's not what we're seeing here, uh, but we're seeing a man of God who was slang, uh, who was slang out of the, uh, out of the sling uh, of the shepherd, uh, that the, the power of God uh, and the force and the torque of that sling. Uh, he went under the power and the unction and the authority of the Holy Ghost uh, and he preached the word of God with boldness. Uh, and verse 37 lets us know that he hit the mark uh, because the men and brethren looked at them and said, what shall we do? Uh, listen, as we go out uh, from the sling of the shepherd, uh, it's not always about defeating the devil. Uh, it's not always about uh, uh, defeating Jesus in our life and overcoming addictions and all of those things uh, there's a lot of messages preached on giants in our life uh, but we hit the mark uh, when somebody comes to us and says what must I do to be saved and they hear the word of God say what shall we do what shall we do and something that we have to understand tonight is the importance of being a stone in the sling of the shepherd. What does that mean, Brother Jamie? Meaning that I not only want to be saved and satisfied, I don't want to just be in the acceptable will of God as we've talked about so much over the last few weeks. I don't want to just be by the shepherd's side. There was many, there's been many over the years that have just uh, satisfied with being a stone in the shepherd's back. Just being saved, just being a part of the church, just being a body of being a part of the body of Christ. Uh, but we must tonight want to be much more than a stone. I don't want uh, to be a stone in the bag of the shepherd. Uh, I don't want to just be a person sitting on a church pew. Uh, I don't want to just be somebody uh, who just shows up for church uh, and saying, "I'm just glad to be a part. Uh, I, I'm just glad to be here uh, and just saved and satisfied." Uh, now we understand and. We we know uh, that those five smooth stones that was put in this bag, none of them, none of them made the choice of being pulled out of that bag. If they could have, uh, when the shepherd put his hand in there, uh, that they, they couldn't, uh, they had no ability to jump into the shepherd's hand. But there's something different about us as stones. When the shepherd puts his hand in the bag, when he reaches out, when he reaches down in a church service, and we're all those stones that make up the body of Christ, and we're in the shepherd's bag, and we're on the side of the shepherd. It's good to be on God's side, isn't it? I'm glad to be on God's side. It's important to be on God's side. But when we're there on God's side, and when he reaches down and he moves in a service, whether it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, revival, or Wednesday night when everybody's tired. Y'all sometimes 
tired looking folks tonight. I tell you what, you must not got your nap today. That, that, and when we come in and God reaches down through all of our tiredness, through all of our struggle. But I'm glad you're here. Don't get me wrong. Thank you for being here. And he reaches down in power it, it, with his powerful hand, the hand of God, grabs hold, wants to grab hold of a life. See, those stones couldn't jump into his hand, but we can. We can. These sisters sing all the time about being in his presence, about being in the master's hand, being guided by the shepherd. I want to be as close to the shepherd as I can. I I love being at his side, but you know where I want to be besides in his side? I want to be in his hand. I don't want to just be by my Lord's side. I don't want to just walk with Him and talk with Him. Oh, it's great to sing, I have somebody with me to share my heavy load. It's great to sing, I want to know more about the Lord. It's great to have that Elijah, Elijah mentality. Wherever you go, I go. I'm going to follow you, and I want a double portion. It's good to have that Ruth and Naomi relationship to say, where you go, I go. Where you lodge, I lodge. All of that is important to be close to God be close to his word uh, but more importantly just being close to him uh, we can do something that those stones in David's bag cannot do uh, we can jump up into uh, the shepherd's hand uh, and say Lord uh, if you can use anything uh, use me uh, I'm not a dead stone uh, I'm not a stone that was just picked up by the brook somewhere and put in a bag uh, and told to stay there uh, and, and to let him just pick uh, and be the luck of the draw uh, we don't have to depend on the luck of the draw Oh no! You know that that stone, uh, if that stone could talk, and Scripture tells us uh, it's possible that stones could talk. He said, because if we don't praise Him, they'll cry out. They'll cry out. There was a a, a movie that years ago, and it was called Major League. It was about baseball, and, and one of their images for that movie was a baseball flying through the air, and that baseball had a mouth on it, was screaming as it's flying through the air at 100, 105 miles an hour, going towards its mark. I could picture that stone as it's flying through the air to hit the mark of that giant. If it had that mouth, it would be going, glory to God. Victory. Victory. Why? Because it was the stone of the Lord's deliverance. It was sent out with a purpose. Uh, what did David say? You came to me with a spear and a sword, uh, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, and then he threw a rock at him. He threw a stone at him. He slung a stone. Uh, what was that stone? Was it just a stone that was laying in the brook? Uh, just, just something? Uh, no, it became powerful. Uh, it became mighty. Uh, why? Because it was put in the sling of the shepherd. Uh, and that stone, he could have picked that stone up and threw it at that giant. Uh, it would have caused nothing to happen. Uh, but because of the torque, uh, because of the ability uh, that David knew how to use that sling, uh, I'm glad to know uh, that my fault, God the Father, Father, uh, and God the Son uh, knows how to use the Holy Ghost. Uh, some people, uh, they don't know about the Holy Ghost. Uh, they make the Holy Ghost a tongue. Uh, they make the Holy Ghost an emotion. Uh, but he said the Holy Ghost uh, is the power uh, that we need uh, to hit the mark. Uh, the power uh, and the torque that we need. Uh, if we're sent out the Holy Ghost. Uh, listen, the Holy Ghost always points back to the Father. Always points back to the Son. And the Holy Ghost says, uh, and I am the sling in the hand of the shepherd. I am the sling. He was, he was submitted and surrendered. Uh, matter of fact, Scripture shares it kind of like this. There's a story that unfolds in the Word of God that it puts it this way. How many remember your wedding day or seen a wedding? If you've not had a wedding day, and, and usually you have up there, You have the bride, the groom, all the bridesmaids, and all the groomsmen. But standing there beside the bride, of course, the maid of honor, standing beside the groom is the best man. And and the groom is there to be the best man, not to get the attention. The, the groomsmen and the, and the, and the uh, best man, they're, they're not to, to dress or look in a, in a way, in a fashion that takes away from the groom. It's all about the groom. It, it's all about, it's, it's, you know, everybody makes wedding day all about the bride. It's about the bride, but uh, listen, she wouldn't be a bride without the groom. 
We are the bride of Christ. But it's not about us. It's about the groom. Because the groom in this story that's being unfolded in Scripture uh, on this wedding day, this great wedding day uh, that we're looking for, uh, listen, guys, uh, don't worry about it if you're never uh, a groom because one day you're going to be a bride. You're going to be the bride of Christ. May never be a groom down here, but when the rapture takes place, uh, you're going to be the bride of Christ. Not talking drag queen, not talking homosexuality, uh, but talking about the perfect order of the Word of God. Uh, to know that one day uh, we're going to be the Lamb's wife. Uh, that we are part of the body of Christ. Uh, but standing there is that groom. Uh, but standing off to the side seems to be uh, someone who is insignificant. Uh, insignificant uh, is standing there. Uh, they don't hear a lot about it. Uh, you don't see a wedding cake that has a bride, a groom, and a best man. It's usually just a bride and a groom. Why? Because he is just there to bring attention to the groom. And that's why Scripture explains the Holy Ghost. But so too many times I think that we make him way more insignificant. Make the third person of the Godhead way more insignificant than what Scripture intended. He's always pointing back. He is in the hand of the shepherd. The Holy Ghost is under the authority of heaven. Come under the authority of heaven. He is known as this, the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father. So the Father puts the Holy Ghost in the hands of Jesus. We find this as he's there in the Jordan, and it says the Holy Ghost descended upon him, and he's full of the Holy Ghost. So we see that the promise of the Father is the Holy Ghost. So I don't know where David got his sling from, but we know where Jesus got his from. We know where he got his sling. We know where the Holy Ghost came from. He said it's the promise of the Father. And I'm glad to know uh, that the Father uh, sent the promise uh, of the Holy Ghost through the Son. Uh, and I'm so glad. Uh, I know Peter was glad when he came by the Sea of Galilee uh, there and picked him up there that day. Uh, much like Peter, I was by the sea when he came and picked me up. Uh, I was just a beach boy raised on the beach. Uh, and he came by that shore. I don't know. Uh, he might have had to come into the backwoods uh, or wherever he came and picked you up. Uh, but I'm with that one that said, I I'm so glad he found me. I'm so glad that he took and he put me in his shepherd's bag. But I don't want to stay in the shepherd's bag. My message tonight is not a stone in the bag of a shepherd. It's not just about being a part of what is happening. I don't, we don't hear about the other four stones. In David's story, do we? But the giant, they had to pull one out of his forehead, the one that hit the mark. That's the one that I want to be. And the only one that hit the mark was one that was in the sling of the shepherd. The only one that hit the mark, Sister Gill, was the one that was in the sling of the shepherd. Not the one that was in the bag of the shepherd, but the one that was in the sling of the shepherd. Uh, well, Brother Jamie, how do I get out of the bag and into the sling? Uh, well, he has to pull you out of the bag. Uh, and can I tell you that he is reaching down into that bag tonight, uh, and he's looking for some stones. Uh, but unlike David's story, he's not just looking for one. Uh, he's looking for many. Uh, because as I said a, a few weeks ago, uh, he's sending arrows uh, to every part of, ne of Clay County wherever you live we are the arrows of the Lord's deliverance that God will send stones out of the house of God tonight under great authority and great power at about 7.30 in the morning I'm going to get on a jet plane and you know what I'm going to do I'm going to be a stone in the sling of the shepherd and it's going to have some torque because it's got to make it all the way to the Philippines and hit the mark of that young person that he's trying to reach or that young adult that he's trying to reach it's going to have to go and it's going to have to fly through some things. It's going to have to go through some language barriers. It's going to have to go through some comprehension. It's going to have to go through some nervousness. It's going to have to go through all kinds of things. But can I tell you, when it goes out under the authority and the power of the Holy Ghost, under the torque of the sling that comes from the shepherd's hand, it will hit the mark. You're not flying out to the Philippines in the morning, but you're going to that job. You're going to that school. You're going to wherever it is. But I want to be able to say, God, 
Send me out of this house tonight. Send me out of this house from the sling of the Holy Ghost, full of power, full of authority. He said, tarry there until you be endued with power from on high. Why would we come to church, whether it's Sunday or Wednesday, and know that we need to be out of the bag and in the sling, but settle for the bag when the sling is where the power is at. The stone couldn't choose, but we can choose tonight. We can choose tonight. We can gather around these altars this evening and we say, God, I, don't get me wrong. I'm glad to be in the shepherd's bag. It's so much better than where I came from. Amen, Brother Steve? So much better than where I came from. Amen, Brother Paul? So much better. Amen, Sister Pat? So much better. Sister Donna Kay, can you give me an amen on that? So much better than where I was at. How about you, Nathan? Better than where you was at? Just to be here? Oh, I love being in the house of God. I love to be able to say, yeah, I'm one of those. I'm a child of God. But I don't want to just stay in the bag. I don't want to be just in the bag. I don't want to just be one of the followers of Christ. Not being cocky, not being arrogant. But I, 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 my personality is not that out front personality. want to be seen by everybody. But when it comes to kingdom work, don't leave me in the bag, Lord. If you're sending folks out with authority and power... That's how I ended up getting called to preach because the preacher said you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I said, I want that. And he said, well, if you want that, then you've got to be willing to do this, preach my gospel. Only way I can preach his gospel is if I had the Holy Ghost. If, 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 if I don't have the Holy Ghost, I'm not going to have that authority and that power and that torque and that ability. So God is looking for some tonight that will say, I'm not satisfied would be in a stone in the bag of the shepherd. Is there anybody here tonight say, I'm a stone in the bag of the shepherd? It's okay to say that because that's what we are right now. That means we're in church. We're saved. We're born again. I'm a stone. And let me, let me just read this to you. It's my closing uh, verses, but I want to read it to you so I can preach another 20 minutes, and then I'll close. 1 Peter 2, 4, and 5. He said, to co who, whom coming... As unto a living stone, this and loud indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So if we're born again, we're stones. And we've been picked up and we've been put in the bag of the shepherd. He's got way more than David had in his bag. David only had five. God has many. The great shepherd has many. And I'm glad to be one of those. Are you one of those tonight? I am. I am. All of us right now. Those of us who are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, we know what it is to fly out. I don't know if they took that stone out of the forehead of Goliath and used it again. Scripture does not tell us whether they did or they did not. But I have been taken out of the forehead of the giant and put back in the sling and slung again. I've been taken out of that mark, put back in the sling and slung again. And my desire for this coming week, these next few days, is sling me again. Then grab me and sling me again. It's Philippines this week. It's Guatemala in July. Uh, it's back here on, the, on Mother's Day. Uh, and wherever God wants to sling me, that's where I want to be slung. Wherever uh, He wants me to hit the mark, that's where I want to hit the mark. Uh, whether it's in the, uh, in, on the job, whether it's in the grocery store, whether it's in the ball field, uh, wherever God wants me to hit the mark. My prayer for my kids every morning when I send them to school is I pray for them to have a good day, pray for them to, to do good on their assignments and all of that. Uh, but what I pray, my ultimate ultimate prayer uh, is let them make a difference. Let them uh, reach a life. Let them be a witness and an example. Let them be a shining light. What am I saying? Uh, let them hit the mark. Uh, and the only way that we're going to hit the mark uh, is if we are slung out of the sling of the shepherd. He said that we are lively stones. So we've, we've raised our hand tonight and said, I'm in the bag of the shepherd. But how many says tonight, I'm not satisfied with just being in the bag of the shepherd.
there's a desire in my heart. I don't know about you, but I want to hit a giant right between the eyes. Knock him out. Amen? That, that, stone, that stone, imagine as David's hands coming down in that bag. Oh, I hope he picks me. I hope he picks me. I hope he picks me. But can I tell you tonight, this shepherd of the New Testament is picking whosoever will. If you, if you so desire to be in the sling of the shepherd, he said, I'll sling you. I'll sling you. But I want him to take me out of that bag and put me in that sling. What is that sling? The Holy Ghost. We must be filled with the Holy Ghost. That we can go out of here, not so much going out here speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is the evidence that you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. But he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you to be witness. What does he say? He said, you're going to hit the mark. And then Peter proved it when he came out of the upper room. He preached, and what did he do? This denier, this one that denied him three times. This one that decided, I don't know what else to do. I'm going to go fishing after the Holy Ghost. The one that sunk, remember that? He stepped out on the water, and he sunk before. He wasn't sinking this time. He wasn't denying this time. He wasn't going fishing this time. Uh, he was hitting the mark. Because when he got finished preaching his message, uh, it says 3,000 souls were saved. Uh, lives were changed. Why? Was it about the stone? Uh, no, it was about the sling and the shepherd uh, and being a stone, being one that's yielded and willing. Uh, I'm satisfied. I understand tonight. I am not the shepherd. I am not the sling. Uh, but I know who I am. I am that lively stone. And I want to be like that baseball, that rock that I was talking about earlier, flying through the air, praising, glorifying, magnifying God. How can we do that? We can leave this house. He said, shoot forth the praises of Him. We'll go flying out of this house tonight, glorifying God all the way home, all the way to wherever we're going. Why? Because we have an assurance I'm going to hit the mark. I'm going to accomplish exactly what God wants me to accomplish. How can you be assured of that? Because as I said a few weeks ago, we are the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and He never misses. David hit that giant right between the eyes, and it only took him one try. So when God slings us out of that sling, with the torque and the power that was behind that sling of the Holy Ghost, we're going to hit the mark. There's a mark to be hit. There's a goal. There's a bullseye. There's an accomplishment to be there. And God has a purpose for each one of us. Stand with me tonight. As we stand tonight, we're saying, God, I'm not just going to be satisfied with being a stone in the bag of the shepherd. I want to be a stone in the sling of the shepherd. You know what I want to tell him, Brother Kevin? Sling me again and again and again. Because I know every time he slings me. I was never real good at slingshots. Never real good at darts. All of those kind of things. But what God does, he hits the bullseye every time. So I, I understand that I'm not the one slinging it. I'm not, I don't even know how he would go about doing that. You ever see those girls in fast pitch softball? I think, man, her arm's going to come off. The torque that David has, he's coming. He's running towards that giant. If you could see that scene, he's just running. And then when he releases it, it hits the mark. God has moved. The shepherd has got, he has the Holy Ghost authority, the Holy Ghost power there in his hand. And time and time again, he's slinging it. But that don't do us a bit of good if we're in the bag. Lord, I want to be in the sling. I want to accomplish great things for the kingdom of God. I want to be that stone that hits the mark. And in order to do that, I must be a stone in the sling of the shepherd. What does that mean, Pastor? It means I must be filled with the Holy Ghost. I must be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're here tonight and you've not received the Holy Ghost since you believed, I'd be the first one around these altars tonight just with hands raised. That, those hands raised, we've said, that comes as uh, praise and worship. That also comes as surrender. But you know what it means tonight? Pick me. Here I am, Lord. Put me in your sling. Put me in your will. Put me in that place to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. And, Lord, then sling me under the authority and the power of the Holy Ghost. You know what happened? We're going to come out here and that screaming is going to be us speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. And we're going to hit the mark. Father, 
We're thankful that you chose us to be stones in the bag of the shepherd. We're grateful for that, God. But tonight, God, there's some that will say, I'm, I'm not satisfied with just being by your side. I want to be in your hand. And, Lord, you said it's the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost, which is the sling. So, Lord, would you just go ahead and let the shepherd put me in the sling and then begin to spin me and begin to do whatever needs to be done to take and launch me out to accomplish that purpose of the kingdom work, whether it's preaching a message, singing a song, witnessing to a neighbor, helping someone in need, whatever it may be, I want to hit the mark to help others overcome addictions, to knock out some giants that standing in the way, that those giants that are threatening loved ones and families, trying to destroy them. Whatever it is, God, we want to be sure that we hit the mark. And when we hit it, we hit it with power. We can't do that on our own accord. We can't throw ourselves we can't sling ourselves out there. We've already slung ourselves on the mercies of God. And you've put us in your bag. Now we're praying, God, take me out of the bag. Put me in the sling and sling me out in power and authority. We ask it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Would that be your desire tonight to say, I want to be a stone in the sling of the ship? Maybe you're already filled with the Holy Ghost, but you're saying, Lord, sling me again. Sling me again. There, there's, a, there's a mark. There, there's, there's a giant. Uh, maybe you see some giants that's out there threatening your family. And, uh, and you say, God, it's time for that to come to an end. I need the power of the Holy Ghost. I need the authority and the anointing of the Holy Ghost behind me. Maybe you need saying, I need some torque, Lord. Maybe that's you tonight. You're already filled with the Holy Ghost. Or maybe you're here tonight and you're in the shepherd's bag. That means you're saved. And you're glad to be saved, but you're saying, Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to be in the sling of the shepherd. Will you come? Will we gather around these altars? No. Wherever you fall in that, that's up to you. And you just come tonight and pray, Lord, it has to be from the heart now. It has to be your desire. I want to be a stone in the sling of the shepherd because I want to accomplish exactly what you've saved me to accomplish. Will you come tonight?